Der Erfolg des Käfers ist vielen so unbequem, dass sie ihn am liebsten umbringen möchten. Aber so sehr sich die möchte gern Käferkiller auch anstrengen. Der Käfer ist nicht umzubringen. Everybody dreamt about a small streamlined car. Mass produced and therefore cheap. Paul Yarai was the first to patent just such a streamlined car in 1927. But neither he nor Bela Bareigny could solve the problem of how to reconcile the streamlining, passenger comfort and economy, with low production costs. Among the car producers who were working on this problem was the talented and resolute designer Ferdinand Porsche. Zerndap and NSU had shown little interest in his groundbreaking ideas, but then he was paid a visit by Daimler-Benz director and advisor to Hitler, Jakob Verlin. Porsche assumed that the competition was interested in his racing car project, and therefore steered the conversation onto the subject of his small car program. A short while later, Verlin introduced the designer to Adolf Hitler at a secret meeting in Berlin. During their discussion, the idea of a German Volkswagen, or people's car, took shape. Rumour has it that Hitler himself committed a few ideas to paper on this occasion. He specified, among other things, that it should be a four-seater car, with a top speed of 100 kilometres per hour, with an air-cooled engine, and a fuel consumption of not more than seven litres. Porsche, who had already presented a study on the production of a German Volkswagen in early 1934, promptly received a development contract from the Automobile Industry Association of the German Reich. A selling price of 990 Reichsmark was agreed. Between 1936 and 1938, several prototypes were produced which were styled by Porsche's chief designer, Erwin Komenda. The car which emerged from the VW38 prototype looks strikingly similar to the later Volkswagen. The air-cooled four-cylinder, four-stroke horizontally opposed engine and the chassis with sprung single wheel suspension were subjected to the most rigorous tests. Scale models were made of the VW38, one of which was given to Hitler for his birthday on the 20th of April 1938. In his 1934 study for the Reich's Ministry of Transport, Porsche had already stipulated that a Volkswagen should be a small car whose road performance and lifespan is not adversely affected by its reduced size and relatively high weight. A Volkswagen should be a small car whose top speed and good hill climbing capability are not adversely affected by its reduced engine power. Volkswagen should be a small car whose passenger comfort is not adversely affected by its reduced space. A Volkswagen should not be a small car fit for only one purpose, but must be fit for a number of applications simply by changing the bodywork. A Volkswagen should not be fitted with complicated equipment requiring extensive maintenance, but should be foolproof thereby reducing any maintenance to the absolute minimum. On the 26th of May 1938, the first stone was laid for the Volkswagen factory at Fallersleben. Wir haben dem Konstrukteur Dr. Porsche die denkbar größten Möglichkeiten verschafft, damit er frei von jeder Einengung seine Konstruktion von höchster Qualität vollenden und sie in einem beispiellosen Verfahren erproben konnte, ohne Rücksicht 
auf die sonstigen Schwierigkeiten haben wir auf dieser Grundlage unsere Arbeiten mit dem Ziele begonnen, Ende 1939 den ersten Volkswagen rollen zu lassen. Dr. Porsche konstruierte eine Limousine, einen offenen Wagen und eine Cabrio-Limousine, die bei 6 bis 7 Liter Brennstoffverbrauch und 100 Kilometer Autobahngeschwindigkeit nur 990 Mark kosten werden. But the Volkswagen was not just a German dream. At that time, everyone thought that technical progress and industrial production would create unlimited prosperity. The first Volkswagen did indeed roll off the production line in 1939. But the outbreak of war dashed the dreams of all those who have been saving up their money. It was only after the war that car production began in earnest. During the war, cheaps and amphibious vehicles had been built, on which innovations could be tested under conditions which would in normal circumstances not be found in the car industry. By then, the car was so perfected that collectors and enthusiasts still get their early post-war models through the MOT today. In 1949, there were already 50,000 Beetles on the road, still with the striking pretzel window. In 1972, the figure had climbed to 15,007,034, thus breaking the production record of the Model T Ford. The English-speaking world named it the Beetle, and this is how it won over the American public. This is a dramatization of a true story. On November 28, 1970, a storm developed in the Sierra Nevada mountains that was termed the worst ever. Six months later, when emergency crews were finally able to clear the roads, something strange happened. A car was found, a Volkswagen, buried beneath tons of snow and ice. But even stranger than that, when the crew supervisor turned the ignition key, The design and concept of the Beetle has remained surprisingly similar to Ferdinand Porsche's production model of 1939, even though improvements have been made year after year. The dream of an affordable mass product had become a reality, and there is probably no other industrial design in our culture which has remained so prominent over such a long period. Jahre der Entwicklung und Forschung machten viele Eigenschaften des Volkswagens berühmt, aber die allerwichtigste ist, dass dieser Wagen läuft und läuft und läuft und läuft. Of course, even a manufacturer such as VW cannot rest on its laurels. Following the success of the Golf, the Beatles' opposite number, Concept One was developed and discarded. Läuft und läuft. Und läuft, und läuft, und läuft, und läuft. But there are rumors that a new Beetle might soon be roaming the streets, reviving a design idea which to this day none of us has forgotten.